Okay, so in this problem, we introduce the concept of a cash flow diagram. In engineering, we use models quite frequently to represent more complicated uh, aspects of real, real life. So in engineering, we use a lot of computer models, sometimes small physical models, sometimes mathematical models. But in the world of finance, the model that we use is something we call a cash flow diagram. And it allows us to visualize the size of payments and the timing of payments uh, in a particular engineering economics problem. So keeping that in mind, pause the video, read the problem carefully, and then when you've digested the problem and you're ready to see the solution, restart the video. Okay, so this problem contains a lot of information and we need to try to take that information and convert it into a cash flow diagram. So the first thing I do, uh, I start by drawing a line. And the cash flow diagram is really nothing more complicated than a line. Most important point on the line is time t equal to zero. That's now, and that is when our payments we usually refer to as a P or a present value occur at time t equal to zero on the cash flow. In this problem, we can see that the total time that we need to model is seven years. So what I do is I draw a line that has seven years on it. And we just draw it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we see from the problem that this company would like to purchase a piece of equipment for $20,000. If we purchase something for $20,000, that is a cost, or that is money that comes out of our pocket. And in the cash flow diagram model, money that we have to pay, we draw as down arrows. So the purchase of the equipment would occur at time t equal to zero, that is now. The cost would be $20,000. So what I do on the cash flow diagram is I draw a down arrow and I draw the $20,000 amount. The problem also tells me something a bit strange, they say that this equipment that I buy for $20,000 has a salvage value of $2,000. What does that mean? Well, think of it um, in terms of something like a car. You could buy a car for $10,000 and use it for 10 years. At the end, you resell it. And the reselling of that used piece of equipment, we sometimes call the salvage value. So in this particular problem, the salvage value occurs at the end of the useful life of the equipment. So that is at the end of seven years. But the salvage value itself is money that we receive. Right? So when you sell your used car, it's money that you can put back in your pocket. So in this particular problem, we'll draw an up arrow for, with a value of $2,000. Now this next part becomes very important in terms of the future uh, types of problems that you'll encounter in this course. So this is quite a long word problem. It seems to contain a lot of information and converting that information into the cash flow model is very important. The problem says something about a, um, a major rebuild or retrofit that, that has to occur uh, on this piece of equipment in year four. And that could be a bit complicated because I have these discrete points in time. It doesn't tell me exactly when in year four this extra cost is going to occur. That's what the refit is a cost that has to be uh, spent on this piece of equipment, maybe just to keep it updated or keep it running properly. So we know it's going to be a down arrow. It occurs in year four. Well. Do I put that right at four or does it occur where? It could occur anywhere in here. This is, this is year one, right? So, so you could say this is year one, year two, year three, year four. So if that cost occurs sometime in here, in the cash flow diagram modeling world, if a cash flow occurs in year four, 
I place that at time t equal to 4. And we'll see later on in the course why that is. Um, but if the time value of money calculations are done with years as the discrete compounding intervals, then it actually doesn't matter where in year four that cash flow occurs. I can just put it at the end of the time period and the time value of money calculations end up being the same anyway. So I'll put that $5,000 cost that I have to spend at year four. The problem also talks about a yearly expense. So this, there's this O and M. That stands for operating and maintenance costs. Operating and maintenance costs occur every year. And again, because they're a cost, they would be a down arrow on our cash flow diagram. So if the, the costs occur within each year, I place the cost at the end of that time period. So at the end of each of my time periods, including year four, so I'll have to sneak it down here, the end of each of my time periods, including the last time period, I have this $2,500 cost. And just for completeness, I'll, I'll put it at each of the locations. Later on in the course, we'll learn that these types of recurring costs are called an annuity, and we'll learn some shorthand uh, or shortcuts for how we, we draw annuities. After you've drawn this cash flow diagram, we're now at the point where we can apply the time value of money calculation rules. But although this problem may seem very, very simple, it's important for you to practice reading the problem, converting it to a proper cash flow diagram. If you can do this, then you're one step towards being able to do all of the other problems that we'll do uh, later on in this course.